Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. So I hope everyone's safe and well and looking after yourselves. It's very strange times at the moment, but we have got a very simple task to do if we are not key workers or in the medical profession. We have got to stay at home. Now we also know that we've got to keep our hands immaculate and while it's never possible to remove the risk completely, Coming from an industry such as my own, it's hammered into us from day one about cleanliness, hand hygiene, and basically the things that you need to do to make sure that you are minimising the chances of cross infection in our industry. But obviously in this situation, we're being asked to clean our hands to make sure that we don't potentially pick up something or pass something on. So when we're washing our hands, we know that a lot of the issues are that we're washing them for longer, we're drying out the skin and we can therefore get irritations. So I thought it would be quite handy to revisit some of the key points that you might already know or you might have forgotten that can come in quite handy with keeping your hands hydrated when we are all doing our best to keep them clean. So a lot of the time it is things like the dryness, the cracked issues, if you get a little bit of dermatitis, maybe you've got cuts on your hands, maybe the dryness is starting to cause issues with your cuticles. So some things that you can bear in mind that you might want to do for yourself. So obviously when you're washing your hands, make sure after you've done at least 20 seconds and you've followed all the routines, make sure you dry them thoroughly because if you even forget and you leave a little bit of water and dampness in between your fingers, that can start to cause irritation. It's also not very good for the cleanliness because it's not actually finishing off the task. So make sure you get in every crease and crevice. When you've dried your hands properly, if you feel you need to, and it's not a bad habit at all, it's a good habit, get that hand cream on. So I've shown you this one before because it doesn't leave an oily residue, but it is very effective. But if you want something that's very oily, and you want something that takes its time to sink in, then absolutely use that too. So you can use your hand cream in the same way or similar that you would actually wash your hands in case you don't really know what to do with it. So take it over all the areas that you've cleaned. For me, I tend to get in the winter, I've said this before, the dry knuckles, and it tends to get me right here and then right on the fingers. So if you feel that you need to spend a bit of time just working that hand cream in there, then do it because you've got a bit of time now. And if anyone's working in the medical profession, you know that if there's anything that we can do for you, if there's any video we can produce, if there's anything at all, then you just say because... I feel pretty helpless just now and if I can do anything for somebody in the medical profession, even if it's just a bit of content that's useful or spreads word or is relaxing, then let me know. What you can also do if you're starting to feel that your cuticles are really drying out, then spend a little bit of time working on them. We're just going through a quick demo, but you could sit and watch TV, you could spend half an hour just treating those fingers and looking after all of the different elements to make sure that you're not drying them out and causing yourself different problems. So that's your hand cream. You can't really overuse it at a time like this, but always make sure that the hand sanitization comes first. If you start to get little hangnails and they can be so irritating, don't even think about biting them. You get your biters, that is the worst thing you can do at this point in time because this virus is very much a respiratory virus. It's all about contamination, passing things on. You don't want to be putting any fingers in mouths. Just no, absolutely not. So if it's a very irritating hangnail and you can't quite get to it, if you've got something like a pen knife, they tend to have the tiny little scissors on them. So maybe you've got one or maybe you know somebody that's got a pen knife in the house. These tiny little scissors could be perfect for just grabbing that little hangnail. Obviously do it with caution and make sure that you don't nip the skin, but something like that could be ideal. If you don't have little scissors, then see if you can get some nail scissors. You might find that now's the time to actually be looking through lots of drawers in the rooms, lots of bags of presents that you got for Christmas five years ago that you forgot all about. You might find that you've got the perfect scissors for it, but please don't pull, pick, bite, leave those alone. You've got to think of cleanliness. 
Obviously filing your nails, now is the perfect time if you want to, to get into the habit of doing your weekly manicure. Now it's also very handy when you're filing nails to get into the habit of making sure you don't have any ragged edges, just making sure that everything's nice and neat. But another reason why I want you to think about filing your nails as is personally at a time like this, when we're talking about hygiene, Maybe think about the length of your nails, the condition of your nails. Think about the dirt underneath your nails. So this could be the perfect time to get any old nail polish off if you've got it. Take a little look at the condition. Decide if you want to take your nail length down and get those nails looking nice and clean so that you can see underneath them. If there's any dirt, and I'm not saying at all that dirt equals virus, not at all, but this is a moment to look at hygiene. If you know that your nails can get a bit grubby underneath, if you're a bit of a gardener or you're one of those people that at the end of the day notices that you've got some dirt and grime underneath your nails, get the nail brush out, get the file out and maybe make this a fresh start that you're going to keep your nails at a certain length or a certain shape and you're going to make sure that you clean underneath those nails all the time and you make sure that those nails are nice and neat. I've got some manicure videos that you can look at on the channel. But again, if you want something fresh, let me know. And then finally, a bit of a two-in-one. This is a three-in-one buffer. Now, this one I've had for years and I love it. It's actually Ruby and Millie that you don't get anymore, but it's really good. All different types of buffers. Most of them tell you exactly what to do. So this says side one is smooth. Then you refine and then you buff. You can take your time for lots of different reasons buffing your nails. It's relaxing, so if you're feeling a little bit agitated or bored, then you can spend your time buffing your nails and it takes your mind off things. It's also good if you're not wearing nail polish because it gives the nails a natural shine, which is ideal for anybody. It's also really good because if you've got any ridges or if your nails are starting to suffer a little bit, again, because you've completely changed your hand washing routine, then what you're helping to do is get some natural shine in there, but you're also helping to smooth down the nails. So it's all very helpful. It doesn't cause any irritation, but we were always taught to buff the nails no more than once a week. But to be honest, once every couple of weeks is absolutely fine. You don't normally buff the toenails, but it can be excellent to buff them if they're starting to get a little bit ridged or if you've got quite thick toenails. The reason they said that you shouldn't buff them was because it stimulates your circulation and helps to improve the growth. And obviously with your toenails, you don't really want them stimulated and growing too quickly. But if you feel that they would benefit from a buff to smooth them down and give them a shine, then that's completely your choice. But just to give you an example of how you can use it, I'll do it on this nail here. So you would just use first part, which is smooth. And again, it's quite a nice thing to do, it's quite relaxing. And you can also get the different buffers that are almost like the chamois leather cushion and then you use the buffing paste or the buffing cream. So there's lots of different ways you can do it. So this is the smooth. So if there was anything like a ridge there, I can actually feel already that's smoother. So you're smoothing down any ridges. Then you're using the refine, which again is just sealing it if you like finishing that task off and then finally the buff and when you buff it this is when you get your natural shine so if you can't wear nail polish or don't want to wear nail polish or maybe you can no longer wear your artificial nails and you've managed to take them off but you don't really want to know what to, or sorry you don't know what to do with your nails then you could spend a bit of time buffing them so that's me that's one nail and it feels really soft compared to the others. Also because I'm a little bit cold, I've noticed here that I've actually boosted the circulation so that nail's pink, whereas that one's a darker pink because I'm actually quite cold here at the moment. So can you see exactly how it does boost the circulation when you compare the two? And I can feel that that's nice and soft and in certain light you do see the shine. So that are some of my basic tips just to help you at this point in time where we are treating our bodies differently, thinking more carefully about our hand hygiene, but we also don't want to have that dryness and that irritation. So I hope that was useful. Please let me know if I can create any more content that's useful. I obviously cannot work on other people at the moment, but I can see if I can get quite inventive with the treatments that I can do. You take care and I'll see you again soon.